Hello and welcome to the Capitola Planning Commission meeting. This meeting is open to the public with both in-person attendance at the City of Capitola Council Chambers at 420 Capitola Avenue and remote viewing is also possible. The Planning Commission staff are attending in person and members of the public wanting to offer public comment need to be present. The public can live stream the meeting on the city's website on YouTube or on Zoom following the link on the meeting agenda. As always, bless you. <laughs> As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Spectrum Communications, Cable TV Channel 8, and AT&T Uverse Channel 99, and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Mondays at Friday at 1 p.m. on Spectrum Channel 71 and Spectrum Channel 25. A recording of the meeting will also be available on the city's website after the meeting. Our technician tonight is Melissa. And as a reminder, please turn off your cell phones during the meeting. Thank you. Okay, so moving to item one, roll call and Pledge of Allegiance. Do the roll call. Commissioner Esty? Here. Commissioner Westman? Here. Commissioner Wilk? Here. Vice Chair Jensen? Here. And Chair Christensen? Here. Item two, additions and deletions to the agenda. Don't have anything? There are none. Moving on to item three, oral communications. Oral communications allows time for members of the public to address the planning commission on any consent item on tonight's agenda or any, any topic with the jurisdiction of the city that is not on the public hearing section of the agenda. Members of the public may speak for up to three minutes unless otherwise specified by the chair. Individuals may not speak more than once during oral communications. All speakers must address the entire legislative body and will not be permitted to engage in dialogue. A maximum of 30 minutes to set aside for oral communications. Um, turn, turn, you can press the button on the... Thank you. Hi, my name is Goran Klopic. I'm a Schweizer Army veteran, Swiss Army veteran. I served in the Army overseas. This morning, I made a call uh, to the CPD because I found some baking powder or some substance that you can produce uh, methamphetamine or some drugs uh, when you cook it. I know that through experience because I've worked for a police department overseas. Um, I, I just want to draw uh, attention to you. Uh, not only uh, I've been talking about that in the city council meeting, but other committee meetings that there is something like that going on in Capitola and it's dangerous. There are kids who are playing at the uh, um, JC, JC Park uh, basketball and stuff like that. They always uh, chit chat with me, and uh, sometimes I invite them to uh, shoot hoops with me, like uh, practice free throws. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you all. Thank you. Do you have anybody else? Hearing none, moving on. Um, Item five, oh, excuse me, do we have any staff comments? There we go. None. No staff comments. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item five is the consent calendar. All matters listed under consent calendar are considered by the Planning Commission to be routine and will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussion on these items prior to the time the Planning Commission votes on the action unless the Planning Commission requests specific items to be discussed for separate review. Items pulled for separate discussion will be considered in the order listed on the agenda. Item A is approval of the June 6, 2024 Planning Commission meeting minutes. I move approval of the June 6th Planning Commission meeting minutes. First. Well, second. First and a second. We have a roll call. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. That that was me. <laughs> um, yeah. Does anybody? I move. Uh, it was totally my fault. I move approval of the consent calendar. OK. 
Okay, thanks. Okay, I'll second that. First and a second. Thank you, Wesley. <laughs> Commissioner Esty. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. Vice Chair Jensen. Aye. And Chair Christensen. Aye. All right. Moving on to item six. Public hearings. Um, public hearings are intended to provide an opportunity for public discussion of each item listed as a public hearing. The following procedure is as follows. Item one, or first, staff presentation. Two, planning commission questions. Three, public comment. Four, planning commission deliberation. And five, decision. Item A is 316A Capitol Avenue. Uh, excuse me, Chair. I believe I have to recuse myself due to uh, proximity. Is that true, Sean? Uh, yes, that's correct. I wish to recuse okay, myself. No problem. This is a conditional use permit for Trestle's restaurant to include the sale of distilled spirits, a Type 47 license. All right, thank you, commissioners and Chair Christensen. As mentioned, this is a conditional use permit for an existing restaurant uh, to include the sale of distilled spirits uh, at a restaurant that already has a, the ability to sell beer and wine. So uh, this is a picture of the place uh, as it looks today. Um, as mentioned, there's, there's actually a two Two uses here, there's a dwelling above and a restaurant below. We highlight the, the frontage of the restaurant itself. Uh, rest, restaurants at this location have existed with beer and wine service, uh, at, at the very least on and off since the late 1970s, and continuously since the uh, previous tenant moved in, uh, Bella Roma Cafe in 1998, and uh, Trestles, restaurant the current tenant has operated here since 2021 and they similarly have a, a, a type 41 license from the alcoholic beverage control for the sale of of uh, beer and wine in conjunction with the restaurant with the planning commission's approval tonight this would uh, they would be enabled to also obtain or alternatively obtain a type 47 license which has the inclusion of distilled spirits with beer and wine. This is a, a plan of their floor plans, and it's a relatively small restaurant. Their front end includes the highlighted uh, in orange deck area on the outside facing Capitol Avenue, as well as the main dining area on the front adjacent to it. This application would not change the structure or modify the, the layout of the, the restaurant itself. And that's uh, almost all we have for you. I was gonna add that this area is in what's considered a high crime area as defined by the state, um, as is pretty much all of Capitola because of our density and, and the number of, of uh, businesses that that sell or, or include alcohol. Um, but the chief of police are, are a delegated uh, person to review applications that include alcohol when they're in a high crime area. Uh, chief uh, Andy Daly did take a, uh, take a look at this application, reviewed it, and got back to the city with a uh, letter of uh, personal uh, convenience and necessity. And they, he, he supported the application, did not include any recommended conditions or, or limitations on it. And that was, that was uh, the basis ultimately for the city's support of this application. So I have, or I'm available if you have any questions, but with that, the staff recommends approval with the attached findings and conditions. Thank you very much. Is there any questions from um, Any public comment uh, or any, from the neighbors or anybody, any of the other businesses in the area? Uh, no, we, we posted and mailed this site. We haven't received any public inquiry on it. Uh, we do have the 
business owner, Nick Sherman, in the audience with us today if you do have any questions for him, though. And the notification area for that is? It's the standard 300 feet. Perfect. Thank you so much. Does the applicant want to say? Do we want to? Yeah, well, I, while I'm usually not in favor of adding more alcohol establishments to the business, into the village area, it seems like we have enough. This is an existing restaurant that's already serving beer and wine, and according to their letter, it's not like they're going to now stay open till 2 o'clock in the morning and turn themselves into a bar. It's just adding, uh, you know, cocktails to a restaurant establishment, so... Uh, I, don't, I don't have any problem with this particular change. I agree. I think it's going to be a wonderful compliment to their restaurant. Yeah, I would agree with that. Trestles has done a fabulous job of renovating that restaurant and uh, bringing in a lot more people to the city, so I, I certainly approve this. Does the applicant want to say anything? No? I think that we need to. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'll I'll make a motion to approve um, application twenty four o. Open the public hearing. Yeah, okay. sorry. I think with the holiday, <laughs> start skipping things. Apologize. Um, so, uh, do we have any public comment? No, hearing none. Opening the public hearing. We'll officially close the public hearing. <laughs> um, and then do move on. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve application 240133 uh, at 316 Capitol Avenue with uh, staff finding and conditions. A second. We have a first and a second, Ms. Bull. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Esty. Aye. Vice Chair Jensen. Aye. And Chair Christensen. Aye. Thank you. Approved. Thanks. Okay, moving on to item B is 2155 and, tw oh, let's invite uh, Commissioner Wilk back into the applicant here. Ooh, that's true. Um, Brian, is, should we move? Yeah, if we could move 6C down uh, up one spot. Okay. With the um, absence of one of the applicants for item B, we're going to move to item C, and then we'll revisit B after. Um, we're moving. So item C is 720 Hill Street. Um, proposed tentative parcel map to split the existing 3.82 acre lot into two lots. You have a staff presentation? Yeah, I have a staff presentation. So... Uh, one correction is we missed a zero in the agenda, so the property is 3.082 acres. Um, and this is a property with an existing quality in uh, hotel that's developed and was approved in 2022 for a new hotel. I'll use the pointer here. There's this uh, upsloping open area on the lot, and that was approved in July 2022 with its own new 42-room hotel. And um, what we've heard from the, the property owner is that um, subdividing was not originally considered as part of having two uh, hotels on the property, but uh, as he's come to the phase of financing and underwriting, he's finding that having two assets would uh, give him more options and flexibility for, for funding and lending on the new hotel and not having to blend it with an existing asset. So. Um, that's not really city purview, but that's the background from the applicant's perspective. From the city side, uh, our, our role here is really to look at uh, what's being proposed relative to creation of a new property line uh, for the existing hotel uh, and the new hotel. So we know that the new hotel complied um, on the same lot as the existing hotel and the combination of all the zoning standards that were approved in 2022. So the main function here 
uh, was to look at this new interior property line and how to parcel A and parcel B. Um, was there any impact to anything um, relative to development standards and, and measurable standards? Um, the, the resulting lots are one point, a little over 1.1 acre and 1.9. Parcel A would have the new hotel and parcel B uh, would have the existing quality in. There are a need for dedication of a few easements. So the green shade here is an easement for benefit of parcel B over parcel A for access to the 30 foot wide right of way easement. And then parcel B reciprocates with uh, also access easements for benefit of parcel A uh, to, to make a full loop around the parking lot for parcel A and uh, the access to the trash enclosure. And then there's also uh, a pedestrian access easement to the trash enclosure for employees ac accessing it. Um, so again, we looked at, uh, and all, all of this is, is laid out in the staff report, we looked at floor area ratio, uh, neither property really even hits the 50% mark. Uh, we looked at setbacks, daylight plane, parking really was probably the thing we had to look at closest. Um, as a result, parcel A has the amount to, to the number of parking spaces, which is 43 required for the new hotel, and parcel B has a surplus of one or two spaces from their requirement. Um, just to kind of zoom in on the new hotel and how the new property line relates, um, you can see how it lays out with the, the hotel in green here and then the, the parking areas. And all of the conditions of, the pro of approval for the new hotel would still be applicable, although uh, I do need to read in a couple that need to be basically brought forward. So this is new from the staff report. I need to add a couple of conditions just for a matter of timing. Um, so this one, the applicant shall add a three foot tall solid wood cap to the existing five foot tall mason masonry wall prior to recording the final map. This condition was added during the hearing uh, as a result of neighborhood impacts uh, and some of the feedback that we got from neighbors on the other side of the wall saying that there was noise and headlights shining into their yard as well as a zoning code requirement for an eight foot tall between commercial properties and residences. Um, so we just need to pull it forward before the property uh, takes two titles and uh, we need the, the applicant to install this ahead of recording the final map. And then the other one is um, bike parking. So with the lots combined, bike parking, uh, the quality ends bike parking was uh, six bike six bike racks. And so we were going to need that to be installed ahead of recording the final map as well. So those conditions just need to be pulled forward. They were part of the hotel approval. Uh, they weren't, so they're nothing new. I've communicated with the applicant. He's traveling. Uh, he had no issues, uh, but he did um, assign an, his engineer, who is also available here for technical questions, but I don't believe there uh, is interest in making a presentation to the commission, but I'm certainly available for questions. Thank you. Um, is there any questions from Planning Commission? <laughs> Um, time to open the public hearing for um, public comment. Is there any hearing no public comment? Um, bringing it back to the Commission for Del Deliberation. No comment. No comment. If any. I'll move approval of uh, item 6C staff recommendation with uh, with the uh, amendments as presented motion I'll second motion in a second can you have a roll call commissioner SD aye commissioner Westman aye commissioner Wilk aye vice chair Jensen aye and chair Christensen aye thank you okay approved thank you very much All right, so moving back up to item B. Uh, it's for 2155, 2165, and 2175 41st Avenue. Project description is a master sign program application for the retail center in the regional commercial CR zoning district. The staff presentation. Also have a presentation for this one. Uh, so the master sign program, and this is back 
before the commission uh, after having been before you in combination with the use permit uh, that enabled the applicant uh, to relocate in this in this uh, commercial space. Uh, so tonight um, is a follow-up to some of the recommendations that were given uh, to uh, kind of provide a theme to the sign plan, uh, further develop the monument that's being proposed, and then include some landscaping. And so uh, just for context reasons, I just wanted to show you this is the, the brick building. Uh, a lot of brick use here, basically exclusive other than the storefront system and the arches. This is uh, 41st Avenue, of course. And um, the photo that I just showed is, is a little dated. It's a Google Street View. So I also wanted to show that, uh, just for context, the existing state of, of the landscaping that in the report we did note is, is a bit neglected. So uh, that's the reason for this slide. And I already provided a little bit of the background, but um, commission approved the hook to relocate to this property. Um, and in looking at a master sign program, um, you're, you're looking at a coordinated approach for a multi-tenant space. You, you are allowed to deviate from sign standards as sort of on one side of the scale. On the other, we're looking for general compliance and themes from the sign standards. So, uh, some of the recommendations from staff try to try to straddle those two uh, guidelines. And of course, it is customized for the site. Master sign program goes on file with the property and future tenants would need to follow it. So getting into the specifics, uh, what's being proposed is a monument sign with uh, a quadrant uh, stucco. And um, this would be set in the center of the front horseshoe planter. And so each of the each of the existing tenants would have one of the quadrants to put their sign. Uh, this would be a max of eight feet tall, which is the code max measured from the sidewalk. Would have a concrete base. Uh, there's a proposal for two, one on each side, gooseneck solar lights. Uh, in total, it's 34 and a half square feet. And then staff is recommending. Here's a site plan of it. You can see the little sliver of orange here. We're recommending uh, just uh, an enhancement of wood cladding at the top. Uh, and the reason for this is, is basically twofold. The, the code talks about use of wood and metal and um, natural materials for signs um, and similar wall weather type materials. And then the other was to tie it into the brick somehow, but not add more brick. So a bit of discretion here, but um, this is our recommendation to add uh, a bit of an enhancement and also comply with the code materials that are listed at four monument signs. Looking at the wall sign uh, and art piece here, we kind of really get into the, the theme approach. So um, the applicant is kind of come acknowledge the symmetry with the property and then kind of the lockdown look with the three arches and the three signs that uh, have been there for several decades and then how do you integrate new tenant spaces with that and so they've they've taken a rounded approach with circular uh, signs and then also balance them with symmetry on either side of the center of the of the building so you can see the two shield shaped uh, sign locations one of them would be the proposed wall sign and then it would be balanced out by an art piece which would ultimately be a placeholder uh, until such time as if there was possibly another tenant added through a tenant improvement um, subdivided out of some of the interior space of the property, like what the uh, applicant is taking over part of the wash and dry. Um, so they're painted aluminum signs and uh, staff's recommendation on this is to add some articulation, either raising the logo or lettering of the wall sign. Um, and I've got Kind of a more detailed look here. So on the left is a wave and a sunshine feature um, in the attachment that the applicant provided. They provided a little write-up narrative of the inspiration behind this art piece, uh, but it anchors against the, the business sign, the hook sign, which is on the right side. And so our, our recommendation, uh, again, does tie back to the city code, which says that signage lettering or logo should be either routed in or raised above uh, the back of the, of the sign. So that's where that recommendation comes from. And in this case, we're saying either the hook or the 
the tree, something about that sign should be raised proud of the, the backing. Looking at the landscaping, uh, the applicant proposed uh, ground cover with red and white clover uh, to be in that center horseshoe landscape, and they, they're offering to repair the irrigation to support that new ground cover. Uh, the staff recommendation is uh, just to perform a general site landscape maintenance, as well as add some 15-gallon shrubs to screen the trash enclosure, and then some perennials around the monument. Uh, and I've got some photos here. The, the two on the one in the middle and the one on the right are are actually in Capitola. So sometimes you'll see layering of ground cover and then flowers or perennials uh, in front of a, a monument sign. And so the, this is the kind of look that uh, that we're recommending. And then the 15 gallon shrubs really tie back to um, in that original photo I showed with the street view. There were some some boxwoods that uh, looked like they were probably part of an original landscape plan, and they used to screen the uh, trash enclosure and they're they're gone now um, so the master sign program document basically follows all of the standards that are being proposed um, and that's attached to the staff report the only other things I'd just call out is that uh, there would be no exposed conduit or raceways there's some language in there about that and then for the curve wall signs that they would be a maximum of 50 square feet when replaced which is uh, what the sign code says is a maximum overall sign size for any property. So with that, I, I do believe the applicant is here and would like to address the commission, but I'm available for questions. Thank you. Uh, question for you. Who, the, the applicant is the hook, but isn't the master sign plan owned by the owner of the building? Correct. And, okay, so that, how do I know the owner's in agreement with all this? The owner uh, in, in, at the application previous, they had written a letter authorizing the hook to to, so the, to pursue this permit. The owner and the other yep. the other tenants don't have a choice. Correct. Okay, thank you. Would the applicant like to come up in it? An owner of the hook outlet and the applicant on this um, so we've worked really hard to address some of the feedback from the last planning commission meeting and work with staff to come up with something that's consistent with um, the aesthetic of capitola the surrounding businesses and the master sign program and um, are in agreement with um, most of staff's recommendations uh, there is one recommendation we would uh, like to um, have you consider not moving forward uh, and that is the recommendation to uh, add a, a layer of um, texture to the signs on the building, which would include like a, a, the raised hook outlet or the tree aspect component of it. Um, in redoing this master sign plan, uh, the budget for our sign is, uh, has more than doubled because we're not only doing our own sign on the building, but we're also producing another sign of identical size with the placeholder artwork to meet the aesthetics of everything. Um, those are going to be hand-painted aluminum signboard, which will be uh, very well done and professional. Um, but adding an element uh, on top of that of uh, the metal that would have to come out for it has to be cut with a CNC router. It adds, you know, more than triples the cost of the sign um, after meeting with our sign plan. And uh, from far off where most people are going to be viewing it from 41st, they're not going to be able to tell the difference between a, a flat sign and, and, you know, an inch of where the tree or the hook's coming out. Um, the signs will also be consistent with aluminum painted signboard and that they're both just going to be round and at the same size and similar color scheme to, to fit in with the corresponding signage that's there. And so um, we're, we're in alignment with the landscaping. Uh, we're happy to change the monument sign from stucco to um, a decorative wood that'll fit the aesthetic and color scheme of the building. And, um, you know, we're also responsible for the cost of redoing the landscaping, which wasn't anticipated when we had moved in and, and done the sign plan. But because the city is requiring it, the, the, the burden of that is on, on our business and we're just a, a small local business. So um, if, if you guys could, uh, if you approve the sign plan and would consider moving forward without that extra requirement to have the um, block out letters or the tree would greatly appreciate it because it'll save us quite a bit of money. So um, other than that, we really appreciate staff's time and help on this project and um, I'm available for any follow-up questions. So thank you. Thank you. 
we have any additional questions for staff? I didn't hear from there. I want to officially open the public hearing as well. Thank you very much for um, explaining. Um, we're going to close the public hearing. Thank you. Do we, um, do we want to have bring it back for deliberation? No. Well, I, I was the one who raised some of the issues about the monument sign, and I think they've done a nice job uh, coming up with a good solution for everyone. Um, I like the two circular signs on the building, and um, uh, I, could, I could go along with not having the articulation on those two circular signs because um, uh, I appreciate staff looking out what's in the ordinance, but uh, on this particular situation, those circular signs are going to be flat against the building, and from the distance from 41st Avenue, I don't think people would really notice that the tree on top of the sign sort of stood out. So, um, and I could go along with everything else. I think that staff and the applicant have come up with good solutions. Can I ask a question to staff? So the um, articulation of the sign, uh, I was at, well, I was recused myself. I was trying to look at other signs on 41st Street. This isn't setting a precedent, isn't it? I, um, aren't there lots of flat signs all along 41st Street? Yeah, I, I, I looked also. There, There's not, you know, the signs probably have history going back years before the current ordinance. So our recommendation is from the current ordinance. So you both well, didn't, well, didn't, uh, so outdoor supply, that's fairly recent, right? Isn't that a flat sign? That sign is approved with the master sign program, um, but it is a cabinet sign and it's internally illuminated. So a sign that is not a cabinet sign, um, it's either wood or metal, Kind of like a license plate, or if it's wood, it would be routered. Letters would be routered in. There's specific Ed language in the code that's so, so that edging the, the the idea that is when you since it's not internally illuminated, you you illuminate it externally, and so you'd see the shadows and the depths of it um, at night, and it would give it more character. I guess that's the idea. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think my, my concern was with the monument um, signage in front and, and making sure that it was consistent with the neighborhood. But driving around up and down 41st, looks like the size and aspect ratio of what they're proposing is pretty much kind of like what everybody else has. We're not offering these folks any special advantage on that. And I, I think I agree the wood on top would be a nice uh, addition as opposed to all stucco. Um, I... I would agree with Commissioner Westman. A flat, flat sign is okay with me because it's a long way from the street, and people are not likely to see any raised numbers or trees or letters. So I'd have to go along with a flat sign. I've got a bunch of comments, so Jerry, if you don't mind, maybe I can convince you before you do your your bit. Um, <laughs> so I was impressed with the applicant's uh, concern of having to pay for all this. And I was wondering why he was on the hook to pay for the two signs. Thank you. And it occurred to me that we shouldn't have that as a condition to have the, the two signs. When another applicant moves in, put up a sign. I don't, the symmetry doesn't, the asymmetry of one circular sign doesn't bother me. And I don't think we should insist on that and start going down design, the design path of what's pretty and what isn't pretty with regards to symmetry of signage. Um, so I, I think we should remove that as a requirement. I also don't think we should be uh, talking about whether or not there should be a wood topping or not. I mean, if the designer likes stucco, um, I could understand maybe if, if our idea was, well, it's a brick area, it's a brick landscape, you should have a brick monument sign. But we're not even saying that. We're saying there's too much brick. So, like, well, I don't understand where, what our design requirement is, so I don't know why we should be weighing in on whether it's stucco or wood. And finally, as someone who has horrible landscaping in their backyard, I worry about enforcing other person people's landscaping. So I my my concern with with re, with 
implementing the landscaping is they should cover the I like the idea of covering the trash can so there's so I, I am I'm okay with the, the 15 gallon um, plants to to, to to shade that because that's a real community concern um, and fixing the irrigation but so so far as to specify the plants that are in there I think that I think we're overstepping our our bounds a little bit so those are my comments did I address some of those? I, I, had, I don't understand why the building owner isn't isn't here and isn't addressing the master sign program. That's kind of I, I mean, I, I'm hearing his concerns as to why there's I mean, Commissioner Will's concerns about the design points, but those design points should be addressed when it's a commercial building on the streetscape of the main corridor of the city. I feel but further I think that the building owner should be taking care of these things and not putting it on one of his tenants and I don't know is is there any recourse to be able to pressure this <laughs> as uh, Ryan stated they've given the authorization to the applicant so we really don't have as long as we have that authorization by the property owner, we do not have to require them to participate in the review of this application. And so really it's up to Bryce whether or not, um, or it's up to the planning commission to decide upon the application and the conditions. And I'll add that the reason, um, so within this review, the planning commission moved forward with a conditional use permit two meetings ago to allow the applicant to move into this location. Typically, and, and it was also tied to the master sign program, and that's really a time that the Planning Commission has the opportunity to look at the building as a whole. It's on the frontage and our entryway into the, onto the 41st Avenue corridor, and it um, represents Capitola as folks are coming into town. And um, we, in, in the direction to move forward with looking at the landscaping and the monument sign, there is a requirement for landscaping tied to monument signs, so that's why we took it to that level. Um, and then the suggestion for wood was just to kind of balance out the materials because there's an abundance of brick on that building. And with the stucco, we thought it would be a nice complement to kind of um, tie everything together. But um, it is on the entryway. The, Planning Commission definitely has the design authorization to make decisions geared towards the master sign program that will be in place for a long time. So, how does how does the applicant and the business owner have some sort of arrangement agreement that they've agreed to and signed? And you know, it seems to me that that's an arrangement between those two people, not us. Yeah, I know. I completely agree. It just seems um, just. From this perspective, it seems kind of unfair to um, shortchange or debate design decisions because the building owner isn't, you know. I mean, you don't know if he's getting a discount on his rent. Sure. You don't, you don't know any of those yeah. things. Uh, my comments, um, I think um, I think I'm in line with where Commissioner Westman was. Um, I, I can. Uh, alter the sign for having the dimensional uh, backing to it, um, but I would feel strong about the other conditions that are put in place, and I think the applicant's in agreement with them and representing the business owner, and I think that that would be um, something I can support. Okay, so I'll, I'll make, are, are you, Paul, would well, you? I had a question for Commissioner Wilk. The artwork, they were proposing to add the artwork. We're not telling them. I don't know whether to what extent that was negotiated. Um, it's a proposal to for the master sign program theme to balance out the wall sign. So it sounds like well, I'm just listening to the applicant who's who's complaining. It sounds like doesn't wish to endure that expense. So either he wants it or he doesn't, and it sounds like he doesn't want it. But if he if the application says he wants it, I guess that's what we go with. So the master sign program allows the artwork, um, and we were 
and the applicant um, included that within their application upon our suggestion. But if there, if the planning commission does not want us to require that extra the artwork, that definitely could be made clear tonight in the motion, and they won't have to install the artwork. Right now, it's part of their application and would be approved. So, um, or if so moved. So you know, I can understand the process where you're trying to get your application approved, and you talk to staff and. They make recommendations and you just say, okay, whatever it takes to get through it, I sure don't like it. And because uh, I've been down that path. Um, so I, I, I would like to, <laughs> whoever's going to make this motion, I hope we can make an amendment to not require the second sign. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll make a motion and we'll see where it goes. Okay. Um, I, I'll make a motion to approve this application uh, with the uh, conditions and findings that the staff's recommending, uh, but with the elimination of having the hook sign have uh, added articulation to it. Yeah, so basically we're eliminating condition 15. I think the motion is to strike condition nine. The tree logo and lettering on the hook sign should be raised proud of the rest of the sign. I was getting to nine after we dealt with 15. 15 we're talking about the not. Yeah, my, mo my motion up. didn't include 15. Did not include. Did not include. I mean, I think that uh, the proposal was to come up with a master sign program for this property. And so as part of the master sign program for this property, uh, you know, sort of trying to balance out the, the spaces uh, and the applicant proposed in their application, rather than put up another sign, that this sign would simply be artwork. Okay. So we would include that proposal as part of the master sign program. Right. 15 specifically says thou shalt install a sign right now. And I thought we were agreeing. We thought the idea was that we didn't force the applicant to install the artwork at this point in time. Yeah, what I'm saying is the applicant proposed installing the artwork as part of their application. And I'm saying, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's part of the application motion I made included installing the artwork. Got it. Up with the modification for the right, intervention, right, yes. which is item you said nine, which was the one, Edition nine, item nine, which was the one the applicant requested that they not have to do. Yep. And I'm just gonna just for the record and to be really clear, the condition um, for the art is is condition fifteen, which is not included in the the motion but it states the wall art sign shall be installed at the same time as the hook outlet wall sign and shall be included in the same building permit so i take back my previous comments but you you could modify that to the shell to a may if you wanted to tonight but as the motion stands that's included and would be required so before we vote on this could we discuss the likelihood of other amendments so I would like to uh, see what the commission's feeling is about removing condition eight, which is the wood cladding. Um, do we really, is it really that important that it be wood as opposed to stucco? It, it doesn't bother me. I think we should allow the uh, applicant his choice in this matter. It's, I don't think it's, I think it's a horrible decision to stick with stucco. Why, why are we so insistent to just simply because someone on the staff kind of likes wood better? I think personally, I think the wood looks better, and the applicant said they didn't have any problem with installing the wood. Well, he's got a thumbs up just when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, uh, it, it's a matter of 
I guess it's a, it's a principal thing as to, to what extent we should be dictating these kinds of things. When they came in with one proposal and we said something else and they said, okay. Well, I feel like we should be able to control, you know, as a commercial corridor that should be like the landscaping. I mean, I feel like it's almost the bare minimum of what they should be. So everybody's kind of like an eight. That's what that's yeah, kind of what I'm saying. Like All right, should, I'll, I'll back off. There right, should be that. some design intent on that. <laughs> and I assume everybody's really happy with the landscaping approach as well. Okay, so, and I, got, I am also happy with the flat sign. Yeah, um, and I, but okay, let's talk about 15 then. So the notion of this second art sign, if we were to change that to may instead of shall, then we can have that notion up there that there will one day be a, a second symmetrical sign there but not burden this applicant with putting it up. As a point of order, we should um, have a second on the motion before making any amendments to a motion. So I'm not even, we're still in discussion. But we do have a motion on the ground, so technically you need a second and then discussion. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that is the, the rules. Do we have a second to Susan's motion? Hearing none. Motion dies. <laughs> Peter, take I propose a new motion uh, that eliminates, <laughs> what is it? Which nine? Is it nine? Yes, the requirement uh, nine and to modify item 15 uh, to um, indicate the sign may be installed at the same time as opposed to shall, with the understanding that. That relieves the burden of the applicant from installing a sign in the near future. A point of clarification, um, when that sign is, if that sign was going to be added, if it's a May, then would that be the guidelines that it obviously would just, that'd be the guidelines that would automatically just be issued. It obviously wouldn't be something to come back to us, maybe administrative. But it would be administrative and have to comply with the 36 square feet maximum. And the design intent that we would, that the motion has, would be the guideline for that? So it would be understood that it would be an administrative permit up to 36 square feet. It would be good to have clarification if the, um, the standard in the master sign program should be changed as well, requiring depth. I'm hearing with the modification, I think that's where you're question is, is will future signs have to have, one, it would be administrative for a future art piece or sign in that location, so issued by staff up to 36 square feet. Yeah, I'm just, I would just appreciate that it was, if we address it tonight, and that's the standard that when it does come time for the next tenant or if they decide to do it, it's already been resolved and it's going to match up and you taking care of it. it. might be a different name, but I mean the same kind of sign and theme of it. So my it does not have to be a circle, just 36 square feet at max. So are you, let's let me get some clarification. Are you also suggesting that we eliminate the, the, the sign requirement in general of having the articulated or the depth uh, of, of signage? I'm not proposing that. I'm just suggesting that we, in this case, we allow uh, an exception. I'm saying. Well, okay. I, don't to, I don't want to change the code. I'm con uh, so if you look at the master sign plan, it's actually attached as, uh, attached to this thing in item D. In oh, D and D, talk about the wall sign and the wall art, and nowhere in any of those specifications do we say you have to have letters. Oh, may vary if letters and locals are raised. Materials, sorry, item four, materials. Materials may vary if letters and logos are raised, routed into the sign or designed to give the sign variety and depth, but it doesn't say shall. So they have the option, do whatever they want, according to the master sign program. And to answer, I think, Commissioner Jensen's question is, they just come back for administrative request. Say, I want to add this artwork, and it falls under item second D, which says wall art. So, I'm, so they can do what they want. 
So I'm confused a little bit about the, the code. So you did, Brian, you, you sent the clarification email out that, that specified, I believe it's in the municipal code about the raised lettering. So there's master, sign master plan is a separate thing that's like property to property, right? And then so that is, that references the math, the municipal code. And so my question to Jerry was, do you actually want to change the municipal code to get rid of that guideline as opposed to, you know, worrying about a specific master sign plan? No. Thank you. Is that a motion? So we have a motion. I don't think we have a second. Anybody like to you repeat what your motion Yeah, that's, what, that's my next question. My motion was to approve the staff recommendation with the exception of eliminating conditions 9 and modifying condition 15 to change the word shall to may. Okay, I can second that. Okay, we have a first and a second. Commissioner Esty. Aye. Commissioner Westman? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Vice Chair Jensen? Aye. And Chair Christensen? Aye. Thank you very much. Okay. That concludes all of the items within the public hearing. Um, we, so we sort of missed commission comments, and I had. Oh, I'm sorry, Susan. Um, uh, I I know that I think most of you will may even be aware of some of this, but there was an applicant that wanted to move into a commercial building on 41st Avenue, and they had a financial services business, and um, they were going in the building where we have the Army recruiter, and they were replacing a hair salon. And uh, but they were not allowed to go in there because they're not a retail business. And I remember when um, the city got quite concerned when the dialysis center went in uh, on Clare Street and then the dentist went in up the street and uh, there were changes to the zoning ordinance to talk about preserving retail commercial in there. Um, but I think we may have gone a little too far on that. And while we're doing our ordinance amendments, maybe we could look at some language that gives a little more flexibility because this financial business is actually going to have customers coming in and out during the, during the daytime. It's just they're not, you know, purchasing a product. They weren't a retail business. So if we could look at our zoning ordinance and see if we could make some uh, modifications there that would um, give a little more flexibility I think it would be good because the worst thing we can have is sort of vacant buildings when there are tenants who want to occupy them but they're they can't that's my comment thank you thank you my comment is I agree with that comment <laughs> <laughs> you have any other Nothing? Okay. Hear about our housing element? Yes. Yeah. So tonight I have quite a few director updates for you. Um, first, tonight during in the when you adopted the meeting minutes, we had talked previously about minutes and the types of minutes and whether or not um, it's acceptable to submit a letter as as your comments because we, we're going to the action minutes. That is appropriate. But I also want to bring up one other point that. During a hearing, if you would like something stated in the record, you can simply say, I'd like this stated in the record, and then we'll put it in the minutes verbatim. So you don't have to go to the extent of writing anything down, but if, if you have a, a point that you want to make sure gets in the record, that's an option. Um, other news is that southbound, the southbound ramp onto Highway 1 off of Bay Avenue um, that exit ramp will be closed starting August 5th, and the construction for the southbound ramp will continue for four months. So that's definitely an impact to the Capitola community. Um, there'll be a lot of messaging coming out in the next week about that, but I just wanted to get that to the Planning Commission as soon as possible. Um, we all 
Four months. Right. Yeah, four months starting August 5th. So school starts August 8th, um, but it's only for the southbound ramp. So it um, people commuting to work into the city will be able to get in on the northbound side. Um, we did, a, staff did a, the Capitola Village sweep. Um, there were six different businesses that were that received courtesy letters with a 10-day um, deadline. And it's just a courtesy letter making them aware of if they have an illegal sidewalk sign or outdoor display. Um, and that's something we do annually. So those letters have gone out and we're hoping for compliance in the next week. Um, our housing element, we got some good news from the state that we've got preliminary compliance. They haven't put it in the official letter of saying that um, the, the letter that I'm really waiting for, but we um, renoted, we put out the public draft again. We plan to submit to HCD next week. So once we submit to HCD, they have, um, they again have 60 days, but the um, director there has said that they'll do an expedited review. So that's good news, and we're hoping to get that letter before adoption. Um, and in planning for adoption, um, I sent out an email this week. I heard from some of the commissioners, but not all. I do want to let you know that we've been having issues with our email, that a lot of emails have been getting caught in the filter system. So. If at any point you're reaching out to me and I have not responded, feel free to pick up the phone and call as well because the, we have had an issue with that with communications. But I am looking for, um, I'd like to have a meeting on August 8th. It'll be a special meeting for the Planning Commission recommendation on the housing element. And there have been significant changes since the adoption with the changes to the mall site. Um, so I'd like to bring that forward on August 8th for a special meeting, and um, I'll pause there for a minute to see if if that date works. I know Commissioner SD is not available, but if we have three commissioners, we would have a quorum for that. Would you want to do 5 p.m. like usually? Yeah, would you like? Five? I was thinking 5 p.m. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Vice Chair Jensen? Yeah, no problem. Thank okay, you. Great. Um, then the, the housing element will go on to the City Council. So there's a 10-day period in which we need to re-notice. That includes the Planning Commission uh, recommendation. So that's why we can't hold it on the 15th. I apologize for the extra meeting. Um, so that will go to City Council on the 22nd for adoption. So um, next, we have a regular meeting on August 15th. And during that meeting, um, it looks like we may have one or two regular agenda items. And then uh, Sean will be bringing forward, and Sean and Ben Noble will, will bring forward the discussion on multifamily. So there's quite a bit, bit of noticing that's going to happen in the next few weeks, uh, public noticing. Our goal is to have the draft available to the public on August 8th. And so it'll be available for one week before that meeting. No action will be taken that night, but really just getting the word out to the public about the upcoming discussion because that's where we're increasing densities. Um, and then two more calendar items that just placeholders is we will possibly be having special meetings on August 29th as well as September 19th. The 19th is the one is if needed. Most likely we will have the meeting on August 29th. Um, and then we anticipate with that schedule that there'll be um, one work session for city council and then a first and second reading with adoption of the zoning code with all the housing element updates by October 24th in advance of um, just the end of the year and the election. So that, that I think that was the goal and we're um, hoping to achieve that. We've got that penciled out. Um, Wait a minute, so uh, October 24th is a scheduled meeting? That's for city council adoption. So August 29th and September 19th. And tomorrow's packet for the planning commission meeting next week, we'll have all these dates outlined in the packet for you. Um, moving on. The so speaking of next week, what's on the agenda for next Tuesday then? 
So for next Tuesday, we'll be bringing forward preliminary modifications to the code. So the um, discussion, we'll, we'll be talking about quite a few of the, the new state laws and how we're updating the special types of housing. Um, we'll have the draft for the um, design review, the makeup of the development and design review committee, as well as the new noticing requirement to get noticing out earlier and uh, have people aware. Um, two additional items are, we'll be asking for feedback on flat work and whether or not we should be starting to require a permit. And a second item that we're gonna have discussion on is um, the retail cannabis establishments, where you're allowed two within the city of Capitola the regional commercial is the only zone it's allowed in, and we're asking whether or not you would allow that to be um, in the community commercial for properties facing 41st Avenue, just because there's so many um, stipulations within leases um, uh, prohibiting cannabis, so it's been really hard for the retailers to find space along within the regional commercial. So keeping it on 41st Avenue, but allowing them to go south of Cap Road. So that'll be a discussion item. Um, and then from there, the future meeting, so I, I brought up at the um, August 15th, we'll talk about multifamily. I do not wanna bring the mall discussion until we have our housing element adopted because that's very much part of the public process and making sure people weigh in on what's drafted. So with the readoption scheduled for August 22nd, I anticipate um, putting out a pub, the public review document for the zoning code just after the 22nd. Um, any other questions about that timing? Okay. Um, now we'll talk about two parties that are coming up. So July 31st is a celebration at the Twilight concert for the city's 75th anniversary. So I hope you all can attend. There will be cake and music. Um, that's the 31st of July, so two two weeks. Oh. And then another party, September 25th, is for the Wharf Grand Opening. And I believe that's going to start around 2 p.m. It might be 3 p.m., but uh, you'll, you'll start seeing a lot of messaging on that. And um, I hope that the Planning Commission can be there. Um, and we're also hoping to integrate some public outreach process during the wharf grand reopening uh, geared towards the long-term wharf planning. So that RFP is out there right now. And those are all of my director updates for this evening. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, answer. The specifically for planning a long-term plan or yeah. proposing ideas for the long-term plan? Um, <laughs> creating a, like, a, conceptual plan for the long-term plan of the wharf. So what the site layout would be, what the land uses would be, whether or not it's permanent or um, movable buildings. So, yep. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay. Tuesday meeting starts at five. Next Tuesday, 5 p.m. Thank you. And I really appreciate all your dedication and these extra meetings, so thank you. Anything else? No, nope. Okay. Anything else from anybody else? All right. Item eight, adjournment. Adjourn to the next scheduled special meeting of the Planning Commission on July 23rd, 2024 at 5 p.m. Thank you, everybody.